Hello. So on December 8th, I had an assignment to write some essays. Uh, one of them was a humorously toned how-to essay. So I wrote that, and I think I did it right, but if I didn't, then please tell me that I didn't and explain to me what to do better next time, because I'm sure that it's going to end up being something related to my summative. How to become obsessed with a band. Walk into a music store. You're looking for some new tunes, something different than your usual classic style. A CD case catches your eye. It is an image of a desert landscape with a white spider's silhouette over top. The album is called Danger Days. You find this interesting, so you take it to the checkout counter. Spiders remind you of Spider-Man, which you love. If this music is anything like the soundtracks to the Spider-Man movies, then you will love it. A man with a salt and pepper mustache stands behind the counter. He takes the album and puts it in a bag, giving you a sad smile. That will be ten dollars, please. You hand him a Hamilton. He takes it and puts it into the register, then puts your bag on the counter. You pick up the bag and, over the rustling of the plastic, hear him mutter, Poor kid, you don't know what he means, but you will soon. At home, you take out the, you take the album out of the bag and examine the back where the songs are listed. Sing, Summertime, The Kids From Yesterday. This looks pretty chill, you think? You put the plastic bag into a bag of plastic bags that you save to fill all the tiny trash cans that you keep around your house. You climb the stairs to your room where you keep the CD player. You put Danger Days into it and begin to listen. The music hits your ears like the sound of a toaster telling you that it is finished. Woke. You are woke. Before you know it, you are jumping up and down with your fists in the air yelling, na 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 this music is your new favorite thing. You look at the album cover again. What band is it that can create such caffeinated tunes? My Chemical Romance. You spend the rest of the afternoon and all night listening to the album on repeat. The next day you return to the music store. You are straight to the place where you found Danger Days and snatch up every other album by My Chemical Romance. I brought you bullets, you brought me your love, three cheers for sweet revenge, the black parade, conventional weapons, and may death never stop you. When you bring your pile up to the counter, the man with the mustache is there again. He rings up your purchases, still staring at you more sadly than ever. You ignore him, too excited to notice anything out of the ordinary. Over the next week, you memorize every song My Chemical Romance has ever written. You sing them on the, your way to and from school as you wash dishes at work, as you vacuum your house, as you wait for your ramen to come out of the microwave. Your friends start to get annoyed with it. People on the street look at you weird. Your boss says patrons are getting annoyed and could you please stop? Nothing sways you in your love of this music. Only your parents starting to take away your CD player halts you in your musical crusade. Still, My Chemical Romance is the soundtrack in your head from this day forward. A month later, you return to the music shop once again. Sir, you ring the bell at the counter. The man with the mustache emerges once again. Yes? Do you know when My Chemical Romance will have its next concert? You give him your best pleading look. He sighs. Didn't you know? They've been broken up for years. Dun dun dun! I thought that was funny, but, you know, maybe it wasn't. It was probably really sad to some people. I like this band's music a lot. Uh, I don't listen to it, like, all the time, so don't ask me to, like, list all of their songs. I did have to do a little research to write this, but uh, I thought that some people would get the joke, so. And then here's another essay that's a bit shorter, and it's an ironically toned essay on a controversial topic I disagree with. Which, yeah. Why dress codes are the best thing since sliced bread. Dress codes are great. Who wouldn't want to look just like everyone else? We can all fit together in a group this way. No one gets singled out. It's easy to tell who is on your side and who is the enemy. Why don't we just give countries dress codes? Americas can be red, white, and blue. We can wear red and white striped shirts and beanies if we want. And blue jeans with white stars on pockets and cuffs. Of course shoes will be Converse or Ugg boots. Maybe we'll allow flip-flops in the summer. And all jewelry needs to be rose gold color. You have to pick one hairstyle for each phase in your life, and that includes length, style, color, and scent. You can't change it until you get to a new phase. The phases would be baby, elementary school, middle school, high school, to age 30, to age 50, to age 80. And after that, no one can tell you what to do with clothes or hair or anything. Because if you've gotten that old, then you deserve the right to choose. That should work great, because it's not like any other country would want to use those colors or anything. No one has to worry about class or levels. 
Just because the white stripes on her shirt are studded with diamonds and the red ones are studded with rubies, that doesn't mean she's any better than the girl whose pants are two sizes too big because they are hand-me-downs from her older brother and her mom has been patching their converse because they haven't got the money to buy new pairs. Dress codes truly are the new equalizers. Yeah. So, <laughs> that is, uh, that's everything. That's the most recent entry. So, we're up to date. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. And yeah, have a great day. Goodbye.